Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Twin Peaks, Season 1, Episode 6, it's called Cooper's Dream, full spoilers for the episode as always. I want to start by saying uh, I came prepared this time. Did you have donuts? A donuts and an apple pie. Oh jeez. There was a donut at the start, where, well not right at the start, but Cooper goes into the crime scene and he's like, Andy get me a donut and coffee and he bites yeah. a donut. Then later on there's a scene. That's really. No, there was more. Well, there's not that compared to the last few though, it doesn't feel like there was as much. I'm sorry, do you not remember the scene of them passing the plate of donuts around the room before I know, it ended but with it doesn't feel like as much as before. And maybe it was just because I had donuts this time, so I wasn't like like paying as much going. It's oh, just as donuts. much. If not, it's more because the camera actually focused on it for like it tracked the damn plate of donuts across the room until it ended with Cooper and he took a nice big bite uh, one of the longer ones. It, it must just because I had the donuts, so it was just like not as Oh, I don't need to, to live through the show for that one. On the food and drink topic, though, I do want to point out, when uh, James and Donna meet uh, Maddie at the diner, mm. she sits down, Maddie sits down, she arrives last, and James says, can you get, 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 can I get you a drink? And she says, oh, a cherry Coke would be lovely. So he's, oh, sure. He leaves. They, they continue talking. He comes back with said cherry Coke, sits it down on the table. The scene ends and she's not taking a t- single sip. She, they leave. They get up and leave. She's not touched the cherry coke. It was a power play. So just to see, just to see if, if he'd buy it. <laughs> was it? Aye. Was aye. it a power play? They even touch. They even opened the straw. Just still sitting there. That really. I don't know why, but it really bugged me. That she didn't even take one sip of her damn coke. At least when Cooper only took one bite of the the donut and handed it back, said, "Here, hold this, Andy." That was funny because it was like, "Here, yeah. hold my donut and my drink while I detect." <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Maybe, maybe that was just the twelfth take, and she'd had enough of Coke. <laughs> she'd had enough cherry Coke, and was like, "No, I'm not drinking any damn more of this." I can't. Be- it probably wasn't actually cherry Coke, because I mean, it doesn't have to actually, because it looks like Coke all the same. It, 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 it could be, it could have been Pepsi for all we got damn no. Well, yeah, whatever was cheap. Yeah, whatever maybe, they had. Whatever it handy. was, she was like, "I'm sick of this. I don't want any more." <laughs> <laughs> and it was the whole scene. You, you tell me the whole scene was the twelfth take. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I don't know. Mate, that's the real reason, though, isn't it? Because obviously they're cutting about cameras and you know different takes and splicing, and they don't want it to appear at different levels. So you just le- leave it at full, and you haven't got that concern. Kyle McLachlan has got this down in art form, so don't you tell me it um, can't be done. She's not as experienced, okay? I love how we've went three minutes on nothing but food and drink. That's all we've talked about so far. Yeah, that's my bad, sorry. There's your bad. You started us down this path. Although now I feel compelled to start every single episode with, right, what food and drink items do we have to discuss this week? I feel like we'd have a good couple of minutes every episode consistently. Probably. All right. So where, where do we begin? All right. Let's start with the case. Let's start with Cooper and what happened with him. So they go back to the apartment of uh, Jacques and they obviously they found the shot the last episode, they're still looking for stuff. They find evidence of a P.O. box and they find another uh, magazine with the adverts for the for the call girls sort of thing. And they also, Cooper's also looking at photographs and he, he notices a, a building, a, a, sort of a, a sort of small house, you know, a small cabin, a more, more, yeah. like, more accurate, uh, that's got red drapes. And of course that makes him go, oh, my dream, red drapes. And this is actually the first time of two times in the episode where, I don't know why they did it twice in this episode specifically, but they had this, uh, what I'll call the epic profile shot, where it's like three of the guys all in a row in profile. Yeah. Yeah, because they had it in the scene where they're looking at the photos, and then when they find the cabin later, which I, know, I suppose it's a nice uh, connective thing, because it's when they're looking at the photo of the cabin, and then when they yeah, actually when find they the real cabin. cabin. So, yeah, so, nice. I, so I get the, the reason. Of, I really noticed it the second time, though, when it was like all four of them in this like perfect It's such a, a strange shot to see. So to see it twice, it does stick yeah. out. It's it's kind of like, uh, this is no spoilers for the show, but we, we looked at the first episode of Legion this week, and I talked about how there was a moment where two characters got out of a car and they both put their foot down at the same time. And how mm. it was just that, that weird offbeat thing that most people don't do in real life, but it was too perfect to not notice it. Yeah, it's the same with this, isn't it? Those yeah. sh- it's, it's not a shot you see very often because it is so perfectly lined up to something that wouldn't usually happen. Yeah, it feels unnatural, but I mean, it's yeah. Twin Peaks and it's Lynch, so I mean... Well, yeah, he gets I'll, away with it, doesn't he? I don't honestly think he directed this episode, he might have, I don't know, but... Let's keep him with his style, yeah. and that's the important part. 
So, so yeah, they go off, traipse into the woods, and it's funny actually. As they were going into the woods, all I could think was, "Are you seriously still not going to One Eye Jacks?" I, I was thinking the same as well when they got the the the, the other poker chip came up. Yeah, I was like, "Oh yeah, we didn't go to One Eye Jacks again." Yeah, amusingly. When I went to, I've got. I always have the cast list up just for names in case I blank on someone because there's a lot of, you know, characters I might. And I, I happened to notice that it said the description for the next one. They go to One Eye Jacks, so we're finally going to One Eye Jacks next bloody week. Bloody time! I think we've been saying it for about half of the show that we've at this point. We've been expecting it ever since they introduced it. I think they introduced it in what, episode three, maybe. Maybe it was yeah. episode two. Episode two or three, one of those. It was early. Yeah. And ever since then, we've been saying, oh, next episode will probably go. And then when they didn't go, well, obviously they had other stuff to do. It'll probably be next time. And then last week, they found the chip inside her goddamn body. And we said, well, they have to go next week. And here we are. <sighs> How did we get it so wrong? So they find a cabin. Not the cabin. They find another cabin in the woods. They get their guns all out. But it turns out it's Log Lady. With the log. Of course it is. We haven't seen her in a while. We, are, we, are, we haven't. No, you're right. And she invites them in as if she was expecting them. Because hmm. she is a bit weird like that. And she has all of, she has tea and sugar cookies ready for them. And she's like, my log saw something. And there's a couple of really weird lines of dialogue that stuck out as well. She, every, like, she talks normally for the most part, but then every, outside of the my log talk to me stuff. Yeah. But every so often there was like a weird line where she'll say something. But it just feels unnaturally. She said something about burning if you yeah, it's about the outside. fire, isn't it? Yeah, and then she said something else about the owls can't see us in here. Mm. Yeah, just there's a little, little weird things, and it's one of those, one of those kind of things where I'm sure when I go back and rewatch this after seeing everything, I'll be like, I bet that meant something. I bet there's a hidden meaning in there. I, I can't yeah, quite piece it's it like together. The, the owls one especially. I was like, right, so who are the owls? Yeah, who are and, the owls? I, I don't know if we've seen enough to piece together who owls are. Like, what, what would be a link? Mm. But I'm sure there is one. So, so Cooper. Well, first of all, he, he goes for a cookie. No, Cooper, being Cooper, he's like, "Oh, I'm in here for the junk food," and she slaps his hand and he's like, "Wait for the tea." <laughs> I think it was just funny when when they when she offered them the the tea and biscuits, and they were just like, "No, no, we're not here for that." And I was just like, "Well, you know." <laughs> it wasn't quite that. It was more like Hawk knew that they'd get information out of her. Like he was, he was. Being yeah. like, he was being the local cop who knew his residence yeah. and knew his public, and he was like, "No, no, no, no trust me, accept it, because we'll get somewhere with this." And then, uh, and then but inside, he's like, "I just want to eat him." <laughs> yeah, Hawk, Hawk wants some food. He, well, Cooper keeps sending him off to look at things. He doesn't get a chance to eat donuts. Like exactly. He, he he's not getting to sit around and eat food like everyone else that much. No, he's not. It's a shame. Poor, poor Hawk. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of, there was quite a few shots of a crow. Uh, through all this stuff, it kept cutting mm. back to a crow that was flying and then landing and squawking. Not quite an owl. Not an owl, a crow. But a crow has a lot more connotations with uh, death and stuff. Yeah, it's typically kind of symbolic with evil almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So the, the log mentions there was two men and two girls. Sorry, which... I can you just say that again? The log mentions. <laughs> Can we well, can we not brush over that? <laughs> well, I actually did laugh when uh, Cooper asked the log, uh, "What did you see the night Laura Palmer died?" Uh, log lady goes, "I'll do the talking log." <laughs> she pats it. I'll I'll do the talking. You just let me Sorry, know. I got this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I kind I almost wanted them to just sit there in silence and her just to be like, "Well, there you have it. The log told you." <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, two men, two girls. And we know it's Laura and uh, I can't remember the name of the other girl that they p- picked up in like, episode two that we've been talking about, but the, the other call girl and yeah. two men. And obviously, obviously Cooper and that theorise it was them and they're thinking, oh, maybe it was Jacques and Leo, possibly. Mm. That's that's what they're thinking. That's what they, But they say it's two and two and then there was one man and one woman and the girl was screaming. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but then they, they keep hunting. And they find the the said cabin, the the the, the magic profile lineup cabin. That's the one. Well, they all stare, and they go inside, and of course, it's nothing but red drapes. So it's like, oh, imagery of the the dream coming in. It's him having prosthetic dreams again, and they find bloodstains. They find twine. Remember, we've been yeah. talking about twine and matching the twine types and things. We've been talking about that. Uh, they find another poker chip. Yep. And they also find a camera with film in it. 
which we've yet to see. Presumably that'll be something. I mean, I, I, I could sure say they'll it. develop it, won't they? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to say that'll be next week, but knowing this show, it'll be another three episodes before we get to see. Oh, I'll be. I'll be. That'll be season two stuff. <laughs> season two. Not enough, enough time left in the season for that. <laughs> Only got two episodes left. Can't can't be having that. Exactly. Uh, so. Yeah, they don't actually linger here too long, like, in terms of just a scene. Like, all the characters presumably are there for a lot longer, and we'll learn more about what happened, but... Yeah, but it, it tells us what they find, and that's all we really need from it. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the Cooper stuff for the most part. Other than the fact that he has been woken up at night, because the Icelandic uh, investors who have all arrived at the hotel like to sing at all hours of the night. It was, a, it was fun. Yeah. Which, uh... And of course, obviously, the Audrey stuff. I guess we'll just yeah. do that now, because it ties in oh, the Cooper is... more than anything else. Uh, so so Aud- Audrey goes to see him at breakfast, as she's been doing. and she kind of, tries... kind of routine now, isn't it? Yeah, she kind of tries to flirt with him. And he's very familiar with him now, to the point where he's like, oh, hey, Audrey. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. Like, 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 no, 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 not today. Come and see me later. Yeah. Uh, and the conversation goes enough to a place where he's like, right, you should be in school. Where did you go? And she's like 18, and I'm like, I don't know if I buy that she's 18. I mean, don't, I don't know that I'm saying the actress doesn't look 18, but I just... But you're if, not sure that the character yeah, is. Yeah, it feels like she's lying because... Yeah, yeah. Older, attractive, handsome man. I get that. Then again, I feel like maybe she could be. I mean, because she's getting a job, so 18. That shows you how lazy you are to get a job. What's your point? <laughs> no point. I'm just, just pointing out. I uh, had studies to attend to. <laughs> <laughs> as did I so we, we see more of her uh, like Heidi hole antics we've seen this in like one of the earlier episodes where she has like this door that goes in between the walls in the hotel and there's a hole in her dad's office and she sees stuff she sees her dad and Catherine she knows they're having an affair she even hears them talking about burning down the mill so she knows about all this mm. and she gets upset when she sees Catherine dancing with Laura's dad which by the way because there's a, there's a, they've got a party to welcome the Icelandic guests. That's what's going on in the second half of the episode. So Laura's dad. So he starts doing his awkward dancing. I've seen him do this before. We he sort of kind of tried to interrupt people and dance. But in this case, the dance floor was empty. There was no one dancing. Everyone's just standing around mingling, that sort of thing. And he starts dancing. And the way he starts dancing was very reminiscent of the little guy in the dream. And it's not the first thing that's happened. Obviously, that, that episode... I think it was episode, it might have been the one after, where he was doing yeah. it at home with the picture. It was also very similar dance. And he was saying, Laura wants to dance. You know, we, we mentioned yeah. that at the time. Yeah. And here it was just kind of like, he's acting this out again. He's doing it again and breaking down. And it was actually a very funny scene because uh, Ben's like, right, he can't embarrass us in front of the investors. Catherine, dance with him. Make it look better. Yeah. <laughs> the best one was the, the, the head tapping thing. And when, when it kind of caught on. Yeah, because uh, yeah, cause he starts breaking down and just sort of holding his head at one point. He's like, ugh. And Catherine, just tr- to try and make it look normal, she's like, yes, this is a dance that we Americans do. And she started <laughs> she started doing yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Was. Yeah. But that makes her upset a little bit. So when Cooper comes back at the end of the episode and he hears this singing, he's like, oh, great, more singing. I can't get to bed. Notices his door's uh, ajar. And he goes in with his gun. And to no surprise of anyone, it's Audrey in the bed, naked. I think he'll be literally the only person surprised by that. I don't know. He, he calls a lot. Of, he kept guessing things in this episode as well. He was like, oh, that DA test will come back as this. It'll come back he as did, that. Which is why I think it'll be amusing that he's surprised by this because it's something mm. relating to him personally. So he overlooks it. Yeah. And then she obviously the last line of the, the episode is her saying, please don't make me leave. Mm. Which, I, which I think's pretty interesting because... I think the start of the next one. I don't think he'll go anywhere with her, like in that sense, because he's a no, but sensible it guy. It didn't even feel like that was what the mood was on her part. No, I mean, it didn't. Yeah, she was undressed in the bed. Uh, yeah, but... aside from being naked, which is yeah, 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 yeah. But that wasn't where it felt like. It felt more that she was upset, scared, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. So I, I think the next episode will start with him consoling her and being a good person with her, rather than taking advantage of the fact that she's like. I'd expect so. Hey, I'm naked, Cooper. But we predict what what's going on every time and we get it wrong. So, I mean, just look at one eye jacks. How many times we've got that wrong now? She'll be like, Cooper, pretend I'm one of your donuts. <laughs> That's really disturbing. <laughs> uh, find someone who looks at you the way that Cooper looks at a donut. Or coffee. That's the dream. That's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. 
so that's that stuff. I, I, th- I think it's interesting for her character because the one scene we did miss out actually it was another really funny scene with her. We know she's getting a job at her dad's store, and yes. the manager. We have a scene with her and the manager, and he's like, "Hey, right, well, we've got we've thought oh, we might start you in the wrapping, you know, the boxes and all that kind of thing in the back, and the sort of the sort of the." The music, so I, you know, the yeah, the, the, the swing drums, yeah, and the stuff. swing stuff, yeah. The, the, the uh, she's up to no good music is yeah. what I'm going to call it because she sort of starts to walk around as if she's trying to be kind of seductive, mm. and then she then she just threatens and says like, "I will claim you try to touch me if yeah. you don't put me on the position I want to be on, which is the, out of the perfume for yeah. investigate investigatory reasons." Okay, got it. It was really funny from the manager's perspective as well, because he was like, "Well, you know, that's one of our our best selling departments. A lot of really delicate customers there." He was like, "I you, I really don't want you dealing with those people. You're gonna yeah. lose this money." Do you know what, like, I don't think this would normally work, but because it's the boss's daughter, I I kind of get his intimidation. It's like, yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, risk, yeah. Risk it. it's like <laughs> it's his job on the line. Yeah, like if it was someone else, I'm sure he'd like fight it and say this is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. You know, get get you'd get like other employees in the room immediately to make sure they can witness whatever is about to happen and so yeah. on. But uh, no, I, I buy his uh, his sketchiness. So that's that stuff. Uh, what do we talk about next? Shelley, I guess. We talk about Shelley and Leo. Uh, big stuff went down there. Yeah, yeah, did. Uh, uh, obviously, she was still with Bobby at the start of the episode, and she makes a point of telling Andy, Deputy Andy, uh, uh, presumably lying that. On the night of uh, Laura's death, uh, Leo went with someone named Jacques in a car yeah. after hearing something. And Bobby's excited about this and all that. But it's all kind of building down because they're waiting for Leo to come home. But when Leo gets home, Hank's outside and Hank beats the shit out of him. He's pissed at him because while he's been in prison, Leo's kind of embellished the business a little bit and done his own stuff and yeah. opened up new avenues. So Leo comes in and he's all bloody, and of course he takes it out on Shelley, who tries to be nice and asks him, "Oh, what happened? Sh- should I, you know, maybe look at that cut, maybe patch you up a little bit?" And he shoves it down. So she pulls out the gun that we know she has from the previous yep. episodes, and he like, "Oh, you don't have the, you don't have the." Well, he didn't, he didn't say balls. I can't remember that line. You don't have the essentially guts. balls. Yeah. yeah, you don't have the balls to do it. And he sort of motions forward, and she fires the gun. Yeah, this thing got really confusing then here. Well, I say confusing. It was uh, played strangely. Oh, yeah, it was offbeat the way... Because the way it ended, she shot the gun, she dropped the gun, and the camera just stayed on her, and she sort of cried as if, you know... And it was, yeah, and, and the way the camera kind of tilts and the lights go, it was really unclear as to what actually happened. Yeah, it, uh, he could be shot, he may not be shot. It's hard to tell. It is. It's, it, it played it very unclearly, intentionally. I'm sure we'll find out in the 2017 series if he gets shot or not. Aye, definitely. Well, I say definitely. Maybe, if we're lucky. <laughs> uh, that's going to become a running joke where we, we keep, keep guessing. Uh, we'll have to wait for our second revival season before we find out the answer <laughs> to this one. Yeah. I did notice with uh, Leo, it really lingered on his uh, gas canisters. You know, the little the red tanks. Uh, well, I assumed that was him preparing to uh, burn down the mill. Yeah, but it just lingered on them for a long time. And oh yeah, they'll come into play. More. Yeah, yeah, they'll come out to play next episode, maybe, in a different way. Maybe they'll, maybe if Leo's dead, her and Bobby will try and dispose Do of the body yeah. with the, the fire. Yeah, it, w- it was very being like, hey, remember these are here. Yeah. Also, making, I mean, not that the gas castles aren't usually red, but making them red really makes them easy to remember for the audience because red sticks out. Red always just, sticks out. Yeah. Like the red yeah. drapes, it always sticks out. Mm. Uh, which, is, which is why the red drapes are really effective in that scene. And why, even in the dream, it implies danger. Because, well, it red just means danger, but it feels like you're just bathed in blood, almost, being surrounded by that much red. Yeah. Typically, you don't do that in a movie or a TV show. You, you, you limit your red down, because too much red's a problem. That's why we don't cast that it, it many gingers. Because it draws the focus, doesn't it? That's why we cast many gingers in TV shows. Ah, uh, you don't want the focus being on too many gingers. <laughs> no, you don't. But it does, it draws your eye. It's just, it's just a simple fact of a uh, colour sort of direction. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, so, uh, so that's interesting. Speaking of Hank, Hank was at the diner, and it looked like he overheard the conversation with James, Donna, and Maddie. Maddie. Uh, they of course uh, get the help, sort of bring Maddie into the investigation. Maddie's going to look for a secret hiding place in Laura's house, which she does later on, and she finds us a, a tape, a, a cassette, audio cassette tape, yeah. uh, which they're going to listen to presumably next episode. 
Presumably. <laughs> yeah, you really have to have emphasis on the presumably, don't you? <laughs> presumably. Uh, and it looks like Hank overheard that. He seems like he's going to try and be in Norma's life, but at the same time, we get this feeling that he's still... Obviously, we see him beat up Leo, but he's clearly still involved in everything he was involved in. Yeah, and I'm sure she might at some point try and send him back to jail. That could prove amusing. She had that good scene with Ed, actually, which I, I thought did a really good job of making us sympathetic to both those... Even though they're both having affairs, it made us kind of sympathetic to both those characters because he's kind of unwilling to sort of dump his wife because she is kind of ill. and She's not quite right, and he feels bad about it. And she feels bad about betraying her husband, even though he's a criminal and even though she wants to be with Ed. And she brings up that point, well, maybe that's why we always end up without what we want, is because we never... We're never put rash enough. First. Yeah, yeah. We, we never put anyone behind ourselves. And it makes you kind of root for them a little bit. Because now I'm kind of like, oh, I kind of want them to be happy now because they're, they're both putting up with the crap that, you know. Yeah, it's it's less of an issue for her because it's like, well, he's in jail for a reason. Uh, we've seen that. He's oh, yeah, not exactly yeah. a nice person. Whereas with him, his wife is just a bit ill and crazy. There's nothing like, She's, there's no malice in that. Oh yeah, there's, there's no malice, but it, even with her, you still get a sense that she's got this moral code where she feels guilty about just dumping him. Uh, yeah. It could also just be fear as well, because it's probably a mixture of both. A lot of column A, a lot of column B. It, it's interesting, though, because it's not like... Obviously, we see how he uh, deals with Leo, but we don't get any impression that he acts like that to her, I don't think. Not yet. It, it hasn't felt like there is any physical violence in the same way that Leo is with Shelley. It's, it's more mental and emotional hmm yeah it, it seems that way but i mean well that could that... be wrong just we haven't had any indication as of yet and that it could also be worse than a weird i mean obviously obviously raising the hands is raising your hands but you know as mental abuse over large periods of time even more damaging to the yeah, other person exactly. you know it, it can still be deeply deeply troubling so uh, that that could be where they go. Uh, our small note on James, he uh, tells Donna some stuff about his mother, how she's an alcoholic, she used to be an artist, his dad's not dead but he's ran off somewhere and his mother every so often will go to a hotel in another city and presumably be a prostitute. you you got to assume they're going to find her in one of these magazines. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Uh, uh, maybe even connected to Laura. Maybe. But... Uh, that that was one of those weird scenes. Every so often, this show will have a weird scene like that where it just dumps all this new information on us. Because it, and you're not sure what to make of a lot of it because it doesn't necessarily connect to other things yet. Because it just it, she showed up to this little gazebo that he was in, and he tells her all this information, and I'm like, okay, he says that he's told her about her dad. His dad was dead before, and that's not that's a lie. But I'm like, did we ever know that? Like, did, not to my memory. I don't remember ever hearing about his parents. Maybe it was like mentioned in an off like maybe when they arrested him they said, Oh, his parents are I, I think they mentioned they were gone because he's with Ed. You know, Ed looks after him. But other than that, I don't feel like they've I don't recall what properly gone into them, so uh but that was that. Other small tidbits. Uh Jocelyn and Ben are having <laughs> I, I, it may be romantic, there was a sort of little kiss there, in the was... hand. At yeah, the there was no necessarily kind of implication that it was more than that. Yeah, like it could be platonic, and it could just be a she's working with him to now go behind Catherine's back, like like a business thing. Yeah, because he he's told her where the the second uh, set of books were that she was using yeah. to sort of help run the mill into the ground, and I don't actually know where he's his end game is. Like, who's who's he playing more? Like, is he still wanting to burn it down? Is it is that still going through with that? Cause, but at the same time, he did say to Catherine, no, let's give her another day to maybe accept the offer. Because maybe Jocelyn's agreed to accept the offer on conditions that we don't know about or something. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. But, but maybe he's got a plan with her where he can get an offer and he can get a cut of that offer that way. Because hmm. obviously, burn down the mill, what, what profit does that gain him? Because uh, well, he wants the land, does he not, for his well, big uh, project? Oh, well, yeah, but other than just the, the, the raw land... If he takes the profit, if he take, if he gets the deal through Jocelyn, he can get a cut of that money and still get the land after as well. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and maybe they are romantically linked, and it's just a case of uh, they're okay. going to burn it, and then they can. Be I mean, there's and, there's but... more than enough romance stuff that we haven't even seen yet. I'm sure. <laughs> Speaking of 
Oh, but it's not gloss over the photograph with the guy in the beard with the dress that they find in the apartment. As I mean, I, I was happy to gloss over it, but sure. Yeah, but it was there. That's, that's just bearded man in dress. Yes. That was a thing. That might come up. It might. Uh, right, so I mentioned that. Addiction to Love popped up again, the, the soap opera that's on, that they, they watch in Twin Peaks. It kind of foreshadowed the, uh, the the Leo Hank scene a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you had this sort of rough guy beating up a smaller guy, mm. and it was like, yeah, next time on Addiction to Love. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. I guess the final big scene to talk about is the therapy scene between Jacoby yes. uh, and Bobby's family. And quite quickly, Jacoby gets the parents to leave because he wants to talk properly. Because he's, he's kind of got like this doctor front on from the parents of there. But as soon as they leave, he's like, right, Bobby, let's cut the shit. Let's, yeah. let's talk about Laura and how sexy she was. That's not what he says. But that, that's what it feels like. <laughs> it kind of did, yeah. <laughs> that's what it feels like. And he actually, he starts telling all this stuff. Like, so when you and Laura first started uh, having sex, uh, what happened? Did you cry? Did she laugh at you? And I, I'm getting the impression that she told him this already. So he's pushing these buttons, and that's why Bobby starts like breaking down because he's getting all this stuff right. Yeah, uh, and they just they, they kind of just have this like debate about like we we find out that she was forcing or forcing is maybe a strong word, but she is the one who got Bobby into selling drugs so that she could have some of them because uh, we know she liked cocaine, and we just get this idea that she had this proper like dark side to her. Yeah, really manipulative. Really manipulative, and she manipulated a lot of people around her because she felt that they were all corrupted like she was. And mm. I don't know, I, I think thematically at least this is bringing in some stuff to the show that has maybe been hinted at before, maybe it'll be hinted at even stronger going forward, but it, it feels like this was the first time it really came to the forefront where it's not just that she was a wreck and was into this stuff, it was, no, she's the cause of a lot of it. She was the epicenter that was causing a lot of this darkness in the town. Yeah, it's also another case of she's got another side to her, and we'd kind of seen that with oh she was troubled, but this is this is no actively uh, endangering others perhaps, yeah. and it, it kind of plays in with everything else like all the all the affairs. It's all these extra sides to people, and yeah. that's kind of everything really in this. She's she's got she's got all the affairs that she's been having, all different relationships. She's got the dark side of prost. Pro, p- I don't know if it's outright confirmed it yet, but it seems like she was a she was working as a prostitute of some sorts. It also seems like she was involved in all this drug stuff and making people do stuff around her. And on top of all that, she was doing all the good stuff that we knew, like everyone knew about. She was helping uh, Audrey's brother with yeah uh, all the all the public speaking, fun stuff that uh, we, we heard about in the first episode. Wasn't she doing like Meals on Wheels or something with a diner? She was doing something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. there was all these good things she was doing as well, and she was like the prom queen or whatever. It, it, like, it's like just oh, it's, it's fascinating stuff. All this like different it sides is. to the same same uh, person. Yo, anything else that I have uh, glossed over or missed that you'd want to? Uh, no, I just I, I really like that whole thing with her having all these different sides because it does sum up the show and everyone in it. Because it that's kind of everything is just learning about all these different sides to all the different people, and that the public fronts versus their private fronts, and how even even in private they have these different faces for the different people that they're in private with. Yeah, I agree. Uh, one other small funny moment I liked is when uh, Catherine and Pete show up to the party and she comes in and she goes, Catherine, and whatever her last name is, and Spouse. <laughs> Doesn't even say his name. And Spouse. I mean, why not? Yeah. Peter's the unsung hero of this, by the way. His, his little sarky comments, he's like, maybe uh, go a little bit easier on the sauce tonight, Catherine. Just things like that. He's just... <laughs> It's, it's, it's very cynical, isn't it? Yeah, very, very cynical old man. It's, it's, it's good stuff. It is. Uh, dear. Also, oh, actually, the other one was Catherine slapping Ben repeatedly. Mm. We're asking about the poker chip. Uh, so where'd you get this poker chip? Oh, uh, Jerry gave me that. Who we saw? We saw a little bit of Jerry in this episode. We, well, not a whole... Not a big deal, really. He was just kind of around. He made his yeah. little speech about uh, Iceland, and we seen him at the start. He he brought all the Isla- Icelandic people here, but... Yeah. That's pretty much it, so... Well, oh, and they want out of business with uh, Laura's father. Oh, aye, because he's a wreck and he's... Yeah, he's just losing them everything. Yeah. 
So, and my cat's really wanting my attention. So, I <laughs> will wrap this up and say thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you thought of this episode of Twin Peaks in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, this episode was slightly later than usual. Uh, if we even have a regular time, I'm not sure if we do. Uh, so, apologies for that. But uh, remember, once we hit season two, we'll be going two a week. So, we'll be picking up the pace soon enough. Because this was episode six. We've got two left of season one. And then we'll hit season two. So, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time.